you know when um so I can still remember um being being in in in, in boarding school at um Ijanik in in Nigeria and coming to my life comes on and we see the video of this elegant woman in 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 in, in a dress behind a piano and and it, we didn't we don't get to see much of that you know we see them I mean just to sit by a piano uh, with a nice band and and just playing and it it's I just still when I listen to the song it always takes me right back to, to those mm-hmm. memories and stuff uh, and how it's empowering it must have been as well because when we see how women are portrayed in music now it's just quite a different thing yeah. but also the song was also very rare about a woman saying a, a sort of a, a song about from a woman's point of view about coming into my life I've got so much love to give because we we normally don't get that how did the song go? yeah you know we don't even normally get women saying about oh, come on in I'll you know I've got so much love to give you I, I can you know all that stuff so it, it it had so many amazing elements that I don't know if you even noticed when you were writing the song, recording it, even shooting the video. No, I, I didn't. I didn't even think that the first time I've ever even heard someone come to me at, the, you know, from that point of view. No, I, I, the, I wrote around the title, Come Into My Life. You know, and I write love songs. So I'm thinking, come into my life. What would it feel to have someone come into my life? You know, and I got so much love for you. So come into my life, but you got to come into my life to get all this love. So, and I actually wrote that song around the title because I love that title, Come Into My Life. Wow. Mm-hmm. Did you know that when you finished, when you wrote it and finished it, did you think, wow, this this was good. This is, this, this is really, this is a hit. Or what did you think when you finished it? I didn't think it was a hit. You know, I, I, my thought is my, when I, when I write a song, I want to write a good song yeah. that can tell a story and that makes sense and it'll make a difference to someone. So, you know, cause the first, when I start writing the song, I'm like, okay, why are you writing the song? Does it make sense? If it doesn't make sense, I'm not going to write it. Yeah. So yeah, it has to make sense. It has to mean something to me or, or, something that someone shared with me I would never write about someone personal you know um um something that someone went through personally but if they shared something that um you know could inspire someone else that inspired me yeah. then I may write around that the um I think the other thing that that complemented the song was the 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 production now at the beginning, were you the one playing the the the, 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 the intro? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And that was just running scales. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that you know, was just running scales. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it it is a, it is it is an amazing intro, and I was um and and it's one of the things that really gets you to to the track, and then we and it then it just almost like you know the beat comes in and it just mm-hmm. lifts you up. How how much do, of the production did you sort of share? I mean, if you're playing and writing and having a, a sense of what the song just sound like. So Mantronic was the producer. So, you know, but the, the keyboards, the uh, um yeah, he produced the track, but the, the basic song is what I gave them and he produced the track. The piano stayed the same, the bass, all all the basic of the song. The lyrics, the arrangements, all that stayed the same, but the um, drums and the, the overall production was mm. uh, Mantronic and the engineer. Wow! And and then even your your high pitched voice in, in in that who whose idea was it to to hit those high notes in, in the middle of the track? Well, it was my idea that it, that was from the demo. I I don't remember now. It's so <laughs> long ago. I don't remember. <laughs> it was just I, I just like to experiment it was you know I was just experimenting you know so it may have been something I heard and yeah. I wanted to try it and it just worked I, you know I, I don't remember so when that becomes as I said I, I, so I'm talking for international when it, it's it, in Nigeria I'm sure most of Africa was big here in the UK mm-hmm. did that surprise you more than all in all and everything how that song just even Billboard's top one, top, you know, top Billboard charts as well. You know, 
That's really funny. Like in America, all in all, you are my all in all is my biggest hit. Wow. But in the UK and international, come into my life is my biggest song. So I, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 but I think for us, it was it was. Um, because at, at that same time we were getting, you know, Stevie, um, uh, and um, Part Time Lover, we we're getting those types of songs, mm. but and especially in the UK and in in Nigeria, a lot of our music was coming from the UK and Europe, and it was, it was a time where the line between R and B and say pop and dance were very very thin, so it it we were listening to everything. It was upbeat. It was uh, positive. Um, and so you you didn't get say in say in the UK a black station, you know you had mm. the BBC and they play everything oh, that right. sounds good. And then right. in in Nigeria it's pretty much uplifting music. You know it didn't care sure. what it, what it was. So I think that's probably why around the world it there wasn't segregated music at the time. It was just music. Mm. Um, so did you know it was big internationally apart from the UK, or what did you just? I I didn't. I didn't because I, well, like Africa, I didn't know how big it was in Africa. I think some people were coming back and telling me like, oh, your song is really big in Africa. I'm like, oh my gosh, I would love to go to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> but, <clears throat> but I knew it was big in the UK and like Europe, certain parts, because I played these places. So I okay. knew I was there to see, but I have never been to Africa and I'm still waiting for my invitation to Africa. Uh. <laughs> but, um, I mean, no, I shouldn't say that because I've been invited. But um, yeah, I, I didn't know, uh, you know, how big it was in, in Africa. And I, and I still hear that, you know, the, it is really big in Africa. Yeah. So, yeah, I would love it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, hope yeah. Hopefully, I mean, it 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 becomes a a a, a thing for you to come either Nigeria, or South Africa, and or places like that. When when the album then does well, um, how's your family looking at it? You know, because you you know, does mom remember? Oh yeah, I'm glad I bought you that piano and studio time. Yeah, we... they were so proud. Yeah, they were very proud of me, and um, you know, but i um, thank God I had such grounded parents and um. But my mom would always tell me because, you know, at times I got um, frustrated and I yeah, might have retired before I even started wow. because it was taking uh, so long. When, at, in the beginning, it was taking so long for um, Sleeping Bag to release. Coming, I mean, no, all in all, that was the first release. It was taking them so long to release the song. And my mom would say, Okay, baby, you know you can always come back home because I was living <laughs> in New York City at the time. <laughs> I'm like, no, mom, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm not coming back until I get a hit. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I had a lot of support. My family, oh, they just they oh they were the, they're the best. They supported me, they support me in everything I do. When I'm discouraged, they're like, Oh, that's okay, that wasn't for you. You'll get more, the next time, <laughs> the next one, whatever. They kept it, you know, encouraging me when I needed encouragement. But yeah, my family is the best. Wow. What was their proudest moment when you you know on TV or, or anything? What when they heard it on on local radio, in, in the hometown, in, in the, oh my goodness, the, they, they were telling me about how the phones just lighted lit up. The phone just didn't stop ringing. Oh my, that, I hear your sister. That's what they said. Like. Your sister's on the radio. <laughs> your sister. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> did you do Soul Train? Did they? What did they think of being on Soul Train? Oh yeah, well by Soul Train, I think they were okay. <laughs> But yeah, now that was a big one for me. Meeting Don Cornelius, I choked up. <laughs> <laughs> I choked up. You know how once you do your <laughs> once you sing your song, he comes over. Hey, how are you doing? Your yeah, it's <laughs> his voice is so deep, right? <laughs> I choked all the way up. Seriously. <laughs> He's I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> 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 so, and he tried to do an interview. I think he kind of laughed under his breath. He was like, okay, we're going to do this again. <laughs> so, oh, good. Were you nervous or how was it? 
Oh yeah, I was nervous. I was very nervous. I was meeting Don Cornelius. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he does sound like the coolest man on earth with his deep voice, yeah. and he looks at you very intent. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It, yeah, that was great. I'll never forget that. that oh was goodness. It was any. Did you get to see the Jacksons or Michael? Or... No, I did. Uh, Smokey Robinson was there, and um, the Whispers. Wow. I think we're there. Yeah, when I when I take yeah. And so wow. I met Smokey Robinson and I didn't meet the whispers though. Yeah. I mean yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'll never that. Yeah, did, that did, as the songwriter, was he aware that you were you a songwriter, not just a performer? Was he aware? Yeah. Uh, oh oh yeah. Oh yes, they were aware. They because he, he had all my information, you know, so oh yeah. Wow. They were aware. I mean, the, the, I know the album did did well. I mean, but after after recording, I mean, what does it like then for somebody who did you then still think about writing for others um, in the midst of that, or you were you just so much consumed in in getting ready for your next album? Yeah, I had to get the next album ready. Definitely had to get the next album ready. Yeah, so that was like straight away. Like we need that next single. So wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah. How would you? Th how did you think the second album did compared to your first? Oh no, it didn't. Oh, so much had started changing by the time the second album came around, and um, it didn't do as well as uh, coming to my life. You know, um, the label had started changing, the industry had started changing, and so that was a totally different uh, experience. I would say, yeah, that was totally different. I think I think uh, Mantronic may have left the label at that time, but the industry was changing. Like all the record stores were closing down. The it was a weird time. Yeah, Sleeping Bag was going through their thing. Yeah, wow. it was 